What you're going to learn in this quick tutorial is how to use string variables in Power Automate. That includes manually triggering a flow, initializing the string, setting the string later in the flow, and then appending the string with something else added to the end of it, and then looking at the output. This is going to be quick, easy, little video to help you understand how strings are used in Power Automate. My name is Dana. I've been automating in Power Automate and Logic Apps for the last six or seven years. It has helped incredibly in automating the back end of a luxury golf brand. If you watch golf, you know this name, you've probably seen it on TV. This video is going to focus on using string variables inside Power Automate. If you haven't seen the video on Boolean variables or the video on integers and float variables, those are also posted online. So if you're trying to understand how variables work in general, you're in the right place. I'm gonna teach you how this works. So first I need to open up Microsoft 365. I need to choose the waffle icon and then go to Power Automate. If it doesn't show up in your waffle icon here, you can simply click more apps. I'm going to then select create from the left hand side menu. Now I'm going to select instant cloud flow. However, I'm going to hit skip. I always like to start with a clean slate with a blank canvas to work from. So let me hit skip here. Now when I click add a trigger, it gives me a lot of options on the left hand side. I'm simply going to search for manual. Manually trigger a flow. Next I'm going to add an action block. You do this by clicking the plus sign and click add an action. So when I search for variables, I see this action block here, variable. However, there's a lot of different actions that can happen. So let's look at the different actions here. We have a append to array, append to string, decrement, increment, initialize, and set. So we have to initialize before we use a string anywhere in the flow, we need to first declare it. We need to tell the flow that we have something that we're going to use later. So let's initialize it. And let's call it string. I know that doesn't sound like proper naming convention and it's not in your flow. Please call it something that makes sense to what your flow is. And we're also going to name this because this, this can get confusing with all of these block names, just the default. So let's call this action right here. Let's call it init string, basically to mean initialize string. I'm going to choose to type as string and then I'm going to leave this value blank. I do not need to enter a value, I'm just declaring the variable. Now I'm going to add another action block and we're going to search for variable again. We're gonna go so we can see all of them. And let's do set variable this time. Now when I select set variable, it is going to give me a list of every variable that I have in my flow. Well currently I only have string available to set. So let's do set string and let's put the value as hello. It's also good to save as you go along. It will help you identify if there's any errors in your flow. You see this green up here, it says your flow is ready to go. We, we recommend you test it. Let's go ahead and test it. Test, manual, test, and run. I'm not going to walk through those steps every time for you. I'm going to skip it. So when I get to the point in the video where I say now I'm gonna test my flow, that is what I did. I just ran through those steps I just showed you. So here we have an it, and we have uh, the variable information here. And now let's go to set variable, and set variable says string hello. Great, that's awesome. Now let's actually do something else. Let's append that string. So I'm clicking the plus, I'm clicking add action. I'm typing in variables, and let's look at all of them. Append to array, append to string. Well, this is a string variable, so we need to use append to string. So basically what this action is going to be is adding something to the end of what we've already set. So let's call this action block append string, and the variable we're working with here is string, and let's say the value is world. So we have hello world. Now. I'm going ahead and save this, and I'm going to test it. So here we initialize the variable, here we set the variable, here we appended the variable. So here we set it to hello, we appended world to it. But you'll notice here, it actually is not giving us hello world. It would seem like it would show us the full output. Well, that's okay. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set another string variable as an output. So let's do that. I'm going ahead and let's do initialize variable. 
let's call it init output. Let's call the name output. Let's set it as a string. And now when we get to the value point right here, what we're actually going to do is we're just gonna highlight this. We're gonna click function. We're not just going to declare it, we're going to declare it with a value. Here I can choose dynamic content. So what I did was click in here. I'm choosing this function, little icon right here. And then I'm clicking dynamic content. And when I go to dynamic content, I'm going to get a list of everything that's dynamic in my flow. And I'm going to choose string. The string is the only va variable that I have set so far, other than output. Now let's test that. And now when I look at the value output, I see hello world. Of course, I did not enter a space in there, so it's just mashed together as hello world. Well, that's great. So why would you find this helpful to use append string? Well, sometimes you want to add something to the string as your flow is going along. Maybe you just want to do a, a number and then comma and then another number and then comma and then another number and then you're gonna have some output which gathers all of that at the end of the flow. You can totally do that inside Power Automate. And let me show you real quick how that would work. So let's do this number, one, two, three, four, comma, and let's append it with actually here, let's actually set it as one, two, three, four without the comma. And here, let's go to append string and let's say comma uh, five, six, seven, eight. And now when we save and test this flow, we end up with one, two, three, four, comma, five, six, seven, eight. This might be useful in troubleshooting. It might be useful if you're trying to go through a loop and you want to add things together in comma format. I've also used this to create CSV files, and I'm not gonna get into that level here, but this can be handy, a handy practice. Maybe you want the output of the flow, maybe you're going to have the last step is going to be send me an email, and maybe the email is a, a basic report of information that happened in the flow, and you've gathered that information inside these appends, and you've put it all together in a string, and now you're ready to plop that string into an email to be able to see the output. You can totally do that. You can also create a file. You can create a CSV file using Power Automate on the fly, which is kind of cool as well. But again, I'm not gonna get into that right here. And I hope you find this helpful. Please do not be afraid to dig into Power Automate and start using some of the great powerful features inside Power Automate. If you are using Azure's platform, you can definitely use Logic Apps. Logic Apps is a more robust version than Power Automate. But I hope this video helps you out. Please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are things that you would like to learn about Power Automate and you're stuck. I would love to hear it. I'd love to help you walk through some solutions. Thank you very much. Have a great day.